Section 13 of Vegetarianism and Occultism. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Andrea Fiore. Vegetarianism and Occultism by C. W. Leadbeater. Section 13. Ghastly Unseen Results. The feelings of nervousness and profound depression, which are so common, are largely due to that awful influence which spreads over the city like a plague cloud. I do not know how many thousands of creatures are killed every day, but the number is very large. Remember that every one of these creatures is a definite entity, not a permanent, reincarnating individuality like yours or mine, but still an entity which has its life upon the astral plane and persists there for a considerable time. Remember that every one of these remains to pour out his feelings of indignation and horror at all the injustice and torment which has been afflicted upon him. Realize for yourself the terrible atmosphere which exists about those slaughterhouses. Remember that a clairvoyant can see the vast hosts of animal souls, that he knows how strong are their feelings of horror and resentment, and how these recoil at all points upon the human race. They react most of all upon those who are least able to resist them, upon the children, who are more delicate and sensitive than the hardened adult. That city is a terrible place in which to bring up children, a place where the whole atmosphere, both physical and psychic, is charged with fumes of blood and with all that that means. I read an article only the other day in which it was explained that the nauseating stench which rises from those Chicago slaughterhouses and settles like a fatal miasma over the city is by no means the most deadly influence that comes up from that Christian hell for animals, though it is the breath of certain death to many a mother's darling. The slaughterhouses make not only a pest hole for the bodies of children, but for their souls as well. Not only are the children employed in the most revolting and cruel work, but the whole trend of their thoughts is directed towards killing. Occasionally, one is found too sensitive to endure the sights and sounds of that ceaseless, awful battle between man's cruel lust and the inalienable right of every creature to its own life. I read how one boy, for whom a minister had secured a place in the slaughterhouse, returned day after day, pale and sick and unable to eat or sleep, and finally came to that minister of the gospel of the compassionate Christ, and told him that he was willing to starve if necessary, but that he could not wait in blood another day. The horrors of the slaughter had so affected him that he could no longer sleep. Yet this is what many a boy is doing and seeing from day to day, until he becomes hardened to the taking of life, and then some day, instead of cutting the throat of a lamb or a pig, he kills a man, and straight away we turn our lust for slaughter upon him in turn, and think that we have done justice. I read that a young woman, who does much philanthropic work in the neighborhood of these pest houses, declares that what most impresses her about the children is that they seem to have no games, except games of killing, that they have no conception of any relation to animals, except the relation of the slaughterer to the victim. This is the education which so-called Christians are giving to the children of the slaughterhouse, a daily education in murder, and then they express surprise at the number and brutality of the murders in that district. Yet your Christian public goes on serenely saying its prayers and singing its psalms and listening to its sermons, as if no such outrages were being perpetrated against God's children and that sinkhole of pestilence and crime. Surely the habit of eating dead flesh has produced a moral apathy among us. Are you doing well, do you think, in rearing your future citizens among surroundings of such utter brutality as this? Even on the physical plane this is a terribly serious matter, and from the occult point of view it is unfortunately far more serious still, for the occultist sees the psychic result of all this, sees how these forces are acting upon the people, and how they intensify brutality and unscrupulousness. 
he sees what a center of vice and of crime you have created, and how from it the infection is gradually spreading until it affects the whole country and even the whole world of what is called civilized humanity. The world is being affected by it in many ways, which most people do not in the least realize. There are constant feelings of causeless terror in the air. Many of your children are unnecessarily and inexplicably afraid. They feel terror of they know not what, terror of the dark, or when they are alone for a few moments. Strong forces are playing about us for which you cannot account, and you do not realize that this all comes from the fact that the whole atmosphere is charged with the hostility of these murdered creatures. The stages of evolution are closely interrelated, and you cannot do wholesale murder in this way upon your younger brothers without feeling the effect terribly among your own innocent children. Surely a better time shall come when we shall be free from this horrible blot upon our civilization, this awful reproach upon our compassion and our sympathy. And when that comes, we shall find presently that there will be a vast improvement in these matters, and by degrees we shall all rise to a higher level and be freed from all these instinctive terrors and hatreds. End of section 13 Recording by Andrea Fiore